Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. I'm really glad you could join me today. It's a nice overcast, cloudy day here in Pennsylvania. You know, a great day or temperature to be planting out in the garden. And uh, well, anyhow, I'm standing underneath a, an arched trellis here that I installed in the garden the other day. And uh, I wanted to share with you some tips and ideas how you can build a arched trellis out of a cattle panel. And so thanks for joining me today. So I'm up in the upper section of my raised garden bed area here and this is where I was initially going to be putting this arched trellis made out of a cattle panel. I was going to install the paddle at the end of the row here. Now these cattle panels are 50 inches high by 16 feet long and so you can see it behind me here standing up here on the lawn here. Now I was going to install this panel from one side of my raised bed to the other and arch it this way. I have about four foot in between the rows. In fact, I even put a, a uh, T-post here uh, in, in each end just seeing what this would look like. And so I ended up deciding not to put the uh, arch trellis here in this section here. You know, I really like to encourage people and emphasize smart thinking here. That's why one reason why we call this plant smart living. I like to take my time and really research out a project. You know, making sure you can see the project from the beginning to the end. That's typically like when I used to build additions or install kitchens. In your mind and you know you and understanding you want to be able to see the project from the beginning to the end that way there's going to be no there may be an occasional stumbling block but it's better to be able to think through the whole process but so anyhow over the last month I knew I was going to be installing uh, one of these uh, uh, cattle, cattle panel trellises and so uh, I really tried to think where I was going to be putting one. I actually ended up installing one down over to the right end side of my potato patch down there below. And so I did want to put in one more. And so I ended up buying these cattle panels at Tractor Supply. They were like $22 a piece. A nice heavy four gauge wire. And so they're going to last a really long time. So anyhow, I, I uh, was thinking about putting it here but then I changed my mind. And uh, I'm actually gonna be putting it down at, at the entrance to my potato patch area down below. And I'm really happy that I did this because, you know, I, I like or love trellises, you know, or arbors that you walk through. And so, you know, I, in this upper section garden here, I already have a couple trellises that you walk through over next alongside my house where the patio is I have a white trellis that you walk through to get in into this whole section back here and then behind the camera I have another uh, a-shaped trellis and then I thought well you know it would be better if I put this trellis this new trellis that I want to build down at the entrance to my other garden section because having installed the other uh, arbor the other day or the trellis I I planted some beans below it and so uh, I was able to stand under it and walk through it and I really like the feeling of walking through this trellis and so that's why I decided to relocate down there so anyhow I just wanted to uh, take a few minutes and walk you through some of my thought processes here and why I wanted to relocate the uh, this trellis so so anyhow let's get started uh, installing this uh, trellis out of a cattle panel so let's take a walk down and I'll show you the location 
that I'm going to be installing this 50 inch by 16 foot cattle panel. So let's head on down there. So right down here at the entrance here where these logs are is where I thought I would install this arched trellis here. And so let's get started installing it in this area here. So this is the area where I'm going to be installing this trellis out of a cattle panel. And so, uh, but you know, behind me is where I installed that other trellis the other day. Let's go take a look at that first so I can give you an idea what it's going to look like. So it's down below this section here to the right of where the potato patch is. So I'm down inside this arched trellis here and you know the width of this one here is 70 inches and the height is 83 inches and this is the the trellis here I just planted some yard long beans here so I'm really excited to watch these grow up grow up these this trellis here but I really don't want it to fit this wide here it's almost six feet wide. I would say I want the new trellis to be anywhere from four and a half to five feet high. It's also going to make it a little bit higher. So let's get up there and start installing the new trellis now that you know what this one's going to look like. So before you get started, some of the basic tools you're going to need are, uh, well, supplies. This is like a five foot T post. You can get them at one of the home centers like Lowe's or Home Depot, Depot, maybe even some hardware stores. So you'll need four of these <clears throat> and a little torpedo level so you can make sure your your stakes that you install, your T-posts are pretty as close to level and plumb as possible. And then a, a mini sledgehammer. <clears throat> and then I also have a, a little larger sledgehammer. And I'll just be using the side of the sledgehammer to install these T-posts. And then about eight pieces of some 17 gauge wire. And then obviously you'll need a measuring tape. And then I also have some of these cable ties that I'm going to use to temporarily uh, install the, the uh, trellis to the T-posts. And you also need some wire cutters. Now these cattle paddles, you know, being they're 50 inches high by 16 feet long, they're a little tricky to transport, you know. I have my work van that has some ladders on top. And so I was able to, I picked these up at Tractor Supply. I was able to lay them, two of them on top of my, my truck. Uh, you could roll these up also maybe and fit them in behind a big SUV if you have one of those. Uh, or a trailer, you know. But that's something you really want to think about before you end up purchasing one of these. How are you going to get it home? And so you can actually pick up these cattle panels just like this and then move them along. And I want to put this panel right in about this area right here. So once you determine the area where you think you want to put this trellis, you know, position it and then take a walk back uh, a distance away and see if you like to see how it looks. Again, I'm going to be walking through this trellis to get to my potato patch area and also to my lean-to greenhouse. Then also to the right of me here is where I'm going to be planting two of my sun gold cherry tomatoes. I'm going to be growing these up that trellis. So on this side here it's going to get full sun, a good six to eight hours of sunlight during the day. And so I'm going to take a second and just stand back and take a look at this trellis before I start putting in these fence stakes. So after positioning this panel where I wanted it, I ended up leaning a, a T-post against each side just to temporarily hold it in position. Now, the width here is going to be 4 foot 6 inches, which is going to make the height probably about 7 feet tall. And so it seems like a really nice width to be able to walk through here. So having your cattle panel in position, you also want to kind of make sure that your panels, you know, kind of level going back and forth. So, you know, on one of these horizontal pieces of wire, actually like this level has a magnet on it. 
but you, you kind of also want it to, to make it level. And right now mine's not level, it's leaning back. And so I'm going to take my hammer claw and dig a, a shallow channel on the one end that needs to be deeper. And then you also want to mark the, your panel now that it's laying on top of your soil. And you can either lay a, you know, just put a, a scratched line along the soil, or I'm going to use these fiberglass uh, rods that I have and mark where each each end of my panel is. That way I'll know to put it back in that same position in between each fiberglass rod. You're also going to want to put your T-post in about you know six inches you know wherever you have a vertical piece of wire running uh, up the, the, the side. But it ends up being about four to six inches because you want to be able to wrap your wire around one of the vertical pieces of wire here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to channel out some of these wood chips here and make this nice and level. I'm going to just take my hammer claw. I ended up moving the panel back about six inches and I'm just going to dig in the soil here in between my two stakes. I'm guessing about three inches in order to make this this uh, trellis more level. And so let's move it back inside this new slot here and see how it works. So having channeled out both sides, you know, take your level and put it on one of the metal horizontal pieces of wire and just make sure you're pretty level on both sides and uh, I think that's going to make everything just fit better and, and uh, look better. You know this is a type of job too where it might be nice to have a friend help you install this. It's you know one man can do it certainly but it would be nice to have a, a helper. So now with the trellis nice and level I'm going to start installing these T-posts. But before you install the T-post, you know, you want to measure front to back at the bottom to make sure you're, you're parallel. And so I have uh, 58 inches in the front. And about uh, 57 and a half in the back. So, you know, I'm pretty parallel at the bottom. So with it being parallel and pretty level from front to back, you know, it's going to create a nice round arch for you. So with the panel in place in parallel, before I put my T-post in, I'm going to take these rods, you could use a stick or something, and mark, mark in about six inches wherever you have a, a vertical piece of wire go, going, and then stick it on the outside right where your new T-post is going to go, you know, front and back. And then I'm going to remove this panel and install the new T-posts. Now my right side here is where I'm going to be uh, installing a, a curved raised planter uh, box here or that I'm going to be planting my tomatoes in and so I, I'm keeping the uh, the T-posts on the inside of the panel on this side. On that the other side here I'm going to be putting them on the outside. So I'm going to just take this panel and move it out a foot and then and start installing these T-posts here. Seems to be able to stand on its own here. And so this is where, again, I'm going to use my smaller sledgehammer to get these T-posts started. And then having marked the bottom, I'm just going to put, put these right where the, the bottom stakes were. And then I'm going to hold my little level alongside the T-posts to try to get it as plumb as possible. And you also can put it the other way too, front and back. You know again, as you want these nice and as plumb as possible and as vertical as possible, that way your arch, it'll create a nice arch for you. And so I'm using my sledgehammer and my level until I can get it to stay pretty plumb. And 
And so you'll want to go ahead and put four of these in. It's uh, depending on your soil, they can go in pretty easy. And then, you know, now that that one's pretty plumb, I'll take my, my sledgehammer, this is actually my log splitting maul, and use this on the side, like so. And then just keep on pounding that down until it's nice and secure. So I just have one more stake to pound in. And again, you just want to make sure they're nice and firm in the soil. So you can see where I used the rods to locate where each T-post was going. And so let's get those out of the way. And I have the one side behind me already anchored in. And then all you're going to simply do is just firm it into the soil. And the T-posts line up really nice here. Now that everything's nice and level. And then I'm just going to take some of my 17 gauge wire here. And I'm going to go around the back and wire it in. I'm going to put two on each side. That certainly seems to be enough. Although if you want to add more, that's personal preference. And then on these T-posts, they have holes on them, holes in them, and just weave it through the hole. And then firm the wire up as much as you can to the T-post. And I, you can just twist these together really well and then cut them off with your pliers and make sure you bend down the cut edge so no one gets cut on them and then I'm going to do the two tops and then I'll do the bottom now the reason I'm putting the putting the uh, twisty behind the uh, trellis here so when you walk through you don't get snagged on that And then just, you know, with this 17 gauge wire, you can just twist it together by your hands. If you're using a heavier wire gauge, you can just use a pair of pliers. And then uh, just have the one on each along the bottom here. You know, again, a project like this, if you're doing it yourself, it might, it might take an hour. I figure about an hour, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. You know, if you have a friend again, it makes it a little bit easier. And then just cut the end off. And this is going to be nice and secure to these T-posts. And so let's just get a nice up-close look and see how I did that. Again, you can see how it follows that, the wire follows that T-post up really nice because both, you know, your wire trellis is level and your posts are plumb. And I put my little twisties behind here and again you want to bend them down so no one gets snagged on them and cut. And then on this left side here, again, is where I'm going to be putting a like a, a 12 inch by a 48 inch uh, planter box here that I'm going to be planting my tomatoes in. So anyhow, I'm really excited to be able to use this trellis not only to grow tomatoes up, but also to, as a tunnel to walk through to this back area here. So you can see how nice it looks. I'm going to have a nice little trellis to walk through to get back to this other section. Now one last thing I'm going to do is take these logs and reposition them in front of the trellis. It'll, that way it'll give it a nice graceful transition to the ground. It'll kind of help anchor it visually into the, into the surrounding area. And so let's just take these other three logs I ended up getting these logs from Green Lane where I go canoeing.
And so this way these these logs will kind of create a, a nice graceful transition from the ground to the trellis here. So anyhow, I think this was a fun project out here in the garden. I, let me encourage you to think about installing one of these cattle panel arch trellises in your garden. Again, for $22 and you know, these T-posts I got from a yard sale. I like going, my wife and I, we go to yard sales, thrift stores, you know, try to, you get a bang for your buck that way. And so I already had these T-posts around, but even if you had to buy everything, it's really not gonna be that expensive. You know, and this trellis will probably last probably 20 years or more before it would even start to rust through. Again, nice four gauge uh, heavy wire. And so, uh, so my next thing I'm gonna be doing here is building a, uh, a planter box again on, on the side here to grow my yellow sun gold cherry tomatoes up. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to having the tomatoes grow up here because again, as you can walk through this trellis here. You can also stop on the way and, and eat some uh, cherry tomatoes. They're uh, nice and sweet. And so, uh, so anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe we gave you some tips and ideas on installing one at, at your house or in your garden. N another nice overcast day here in Pennsylvania. So anyhow, I just want to thank you for joining me today and I hope you have a great day. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.